so if you follow the channel, around about this time last year, I did two eight hour live streams of an event called Hot Chips. Hot Chips focuses on the technology, the market architecture, and for the people who submit papers, it's usually their leading edge product, maybe their next gen product that they're ready to talk about, or some fundamental aspect of the industry from a hardware perspective they want to get through. The whole point about hot chips is that it's to do with hot chips. We're talking about typically stuff that requires active cooling, as opposed to the cold chips conference, which is more about integrated and IoT. Over the last few years, there's been a focus on machine learning and AI, as you probably would expect. However, it's been tempered down a little. Um, this year, there's at least one five talk segment uh, about AI, which that has some really interesting talks in it. And the whole point of this video is to go through the agenda with you. What's your minimum specification? If you want an independent cloud services provider for home servers, VPNs, or clients, consider Linode and sign up today at linode.com slash techtechpotato for a free $100 60-day credit. A recent Gartner performance report shows Linode's topology offers almost double the database performance per dollar than other public cloud services. So Hot Chips occurs over three days. There's a day zero, which is the tutorial day. That's on Sunday, the 21st of August. Then on Monday 22nd, Tuesday 23rd, we have the two main days of talks where there's a single track. There's no need to go to, say, the IoT track or the HPC track. It's just a single track. And the idea with this conference is that from the first session of the first day to the final session of the second day of the Tuesday, that you stay for the whole lot and you get so many half hour presentations talking about all the latest hot chips, plus a couple of one hour keynotes. So starting off with this event, with the first day, or with day zero actually, tutorial day. The first topic coming up is all about CXL. Now CXL 3.0 was just announced, and the whole point of this section is to talk about CXL 2.0 and CXL 3.0 and the steps needed to support it. In this presentation, we have overview and evolution, we have a coherency deep dive, uh, memory use cases and challenges with memory being one of the more popular use cases for CXL and then fabric introduction and use cases for the new CXL 3.0 uh, options. We've got talks, these talks are from Microsoft, Intel, Meta and AMD and Micron and AMD. So AMD is double dipping on CXL. That shows you just how important CXL probably is to AMD. That takes the morning of day zero. And in the afternoon, we have heterogeneous compilation in mid-level intermediate representations. So this is more about code generation and languages becoming very important as uh, AI chips are scaling out into the ecosystem. We need representative compilers that can work in mid-level intermediate representation languages. And uh, this session is you know, Google, Nod.ai, ARM, Sci-5, Microsoft, concepts, code generation, front ends and frameworks, giving the audience um, of the uh, of the tutorials a kind of groundwork in talking about uh, heterogeneous compilation. Think on, thinking back on it, this is perhaps one of the more esoteric tutorials um, that I've seen over the last few years. Uh, attendance at tutorials is usually mixed out of the 2,000 or so people that attend Hot Chips. I'd say about a thousand attend the tutorials. It's a bit less um, because we're now all virtual this year, all virtual. Hopefully next year it's going to be in person because that's when we get the more meaty Q&A sessions and you actually meet people in the corridor. That's what I really look forward to at these events. But um, this year, all virtual. Um, and that's the tutorial day. So then we go on to uh, Monday, 22nd of August, which is the first day of the conference. And straight out the gate, after a small 15 minute introduction, it's a doozy. We go straight into GPUs and HPC, with the first talk being about NVIDIA's Hopper GPU and scaling performance. This is uh, Jack Choquette and Ronnie Krasinski from NVIDIA speaking about how uh, NVIDIA Hopper, their newest generation architecture, microarchitecture, scales out across multiple GPUs. They're likely going to be talking here about uh, HPC performance or kind of like DGX H100 series performance. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what comes out there. We kind of already know all the Hopper architecture stuff. Um, I should point out that these, these talks are all 30 minutes. Um, so this first session with four talks is two hours and the only talks that go on longer than that is other keynotes, but we'll get to those in a second. 
Second up in this GPUs and HPC session, we've got AMD's Instinct MI200 series. So this is talking about cDNA2, which has already been out for a little while. It's a, a dive into the accelerator and node architectures from Alan Smith and Norman James from AMD. I expect this to be a bit of a rehash of what we've seen already, especially as it relates to uh, design and performance. Might see some more case studies from how the MI200 series has been deployed at AMD customers. Then third up, this is, uh, this is a presentation I'm looking forward to. It's Intel's Ponte Vecchio GPU. We're going to talk about architecture, system, and software from Hong Jiang at Intel. Now, we already know about the architecture and the system. Software is one API, but the question is how that integrates at scale. Hopefully, Intel goes into some detail here. I'm expecting to see at least some level of detail that we can report on. And then the fourth talk in this section is, is from Buren Technology. If you've never heard of this company, neither have I, but they have the Buren BR100 GP GPU, Accelerating Data Center Scale AI Computing. So this sounds like another one of those AI hardware startups who have designed a GP GPU product for AI acceleration. It doesn't say here whether it's training or inference, though if you're talking data center scale, usually that's training. Um, so if they're coming out with a new training GPU, that's going to be interesting to see. And if it's data scale AI computing, it'll be able to do mixed precision. So there'll hopefully be some architecture details there. So then we move into a quick half hour break and those breaks really go quicker than you think. Straight into integration technologies. So we're talking about packaging, but also interconnecting communications. First up is a talk by uh, Nicholas Harris from Light Matter. Now, Light Matter, uh, I think they did a talk two or three years ago, they're dealing in silicon photonics. And what Nick is going to be talking about is Passage, a wafer scale programmable photonic communication substrate. So if you're used to things like um, the Cerebrus wafer scale, that's just on chip electrical connection. And then we go to something like Tesla Dojo, where that's multiple chips on wafer but still with this kind of electrical connection. The idea is that if we scale out, you can use um, optical transceivers as chiplets on wafers, have the wafer scale as the compute, and then do your communication between the chips on the wafer through optics or off the wafer through optics. Interesting to see how that turns out. Light Matter, I believe, is still um, a VC funded um, enterprise right now. Um, I've actually got an email in my inbox uh, from Light Matter asking whether I'd like um, a, a, a discussion with Nick. Um, though that email is probably about six weeks old at this point. I'll probably have to hit them up to see if they'll give me a preview of, of the presentation. Next up, we have Intel talking about heterogeneous integration that enables fabric FPGA-based hardware acceleration for RF applications. So when we talk about RF with radio frequency and the need to support multiple frequencies within the same chip, if you have a level of configurability, such as an FPGA or perhaps an EASIC, then you'll be able to manipulate which um, algorithms you use, particularly good for security, on the fly when the product is deployed in the field. So that's what I expect that talk to be about. It's talking about heterogeneous integration. So we're probably talking about um, stacked chiplets as it comes to RF, uh, particularly in the telco space, you know, 5G antenna base stations, the ability to do all that. Then we've got a company I've never heard of before called Ranavus doing uh, enabling scalable application specific optical engines by monolithic integration of photonics and electronics. So again, integration of photonics, we're talking about chiplets, either in a two and a half D or 3D stacked, and then being able to have application specific optical engines, which is different to communications. This is probably compute um, using uh, Max Snyder uh, interferometers, uh, MZIs. Uh, so interesting to see what happens there. Then finally, we have Samsung talking about CXL, so scaling of memory performance and capacity with CXL memory expander. Um, we've got a video on uh, Samsung's CXL memory expander. I believe they've just announced a new version as well. Uh, so we're going to see what scales they can get with that product. There's always a trade-off between capacity and bandwidth, and CXL is you know trying to alleviate some of that along with a composable uh, infrastructure inside the data center. So that's going to be a talk I'm going to be interested in. Then we have a one hour lunch. Again, goes a lot quicker than you think. Straight into the first keynote of the event. It's from Pat Gelsinger, Intel. Semiconductors run the world. Um, this is gonna be an interesting uh, presentation in the fact that the Chips Act was just signed yesterday as I'm filming this. 
Um, but also Intel had a relatively bad financial quarter um, and they've had to reduce their capital expenditure funding um, for the build out of their fabs. So it'll be interesting to see what Pat focuses on, whether it will be sort of a high level um, holistic view or whether he will actually go deep down and be critical about some of this stuff. Then we come on to the final session of the day, another four talks, this time by Academia. Uh, Hot Chips tries to make provisions for Academia because they've got some fun, interesting stuff coming up. Um, first talk is by Yale, then we've got ETH Zurich, Stanford, and then finally ARM. We've got Halo, flexible, low-power processing fabric for brain-computer interfaces. Kraken, a uh, direct frame-based uh, multi-sensor fusion SoC for ultra-efficient visual processing in nano UAVs. That might actually be interesting because in automotive, we deal with sensor fusion all the time, but that's because the power limit is a lot larger. With these uh, nano unmanned aerial vehicles, the UAVs, they're small, they have power limits. So being able to do sensor fusion, which helps reduce um, the compute requirements, if the fusion sen if the uh, multi-sensor fusion SOC can do that at a low power than the compute, then it becomes a better trade-off, albeit using more silicon, but so we'll see what happens there. Stanford with Amber, coarse-grained reconfigurable array-based SOC for dense linear algebra acceleration. So this is CGRA, which is kind of FPGA-like, but not. Um, this is an SOC for dense linear algebra, algebra acceleration. So this is more sort of HPC, um, AI tends to deal with sparse linear algebra, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Then finally, we have ARM. ARM's doing a more security-based um, talk here with their Morello evaluation platform. Uh, this is Cherry-based security in a high-performance system. ARM announced Morello uh, a few months ago now, and the idea is that you have specific SOCs to help you build out the security that you need that you can then deploy in the future. So I'm looking forward to that talk. That's the last one on the first day. Thankfully, we're ending at 6 p.m. I think last year we ended up about 7.30. Um, but then we come on to uh, the longer day, day two, uh, August 23rd, starting straight off the bat, 8.30 a.m. with five talks about machine learning. Uh, first up is Grok. We have Dennis Apps from Grok talking about Grok software-defined scale-out tensor stream multiprocessor. Now, I'm sure this is Grok talking about its current generation product. Um, I've looked into it before. The big selling point is that uh, batch one latency is consistent regardless because of their streaming tile architecture enables that consistent latency. You're essentially moving instructions rather than data. Um, it's really hard to get your wrap your head around. I'm still not sure I have it 100%. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Dennis uh, either goes into detail about that or they've got a second generation product. Given that they spoke about their first generation really, really early, it should be second generation time. So Dennis, give us a shout. Then we have Untether.ai. Um, there, Robert Beechler is uh, presenting Bukera, next generation at memory in inference acceleration device with a thousand plus risk cores. So this caps on to this 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 attaches onto a lot of seo points here we've got risk five we've got next generation we've got at memory we've got inference acceleration so the whole point here is that if you can do some of your computation in memory or memory in compute or there's multiple versions of how you want to do that but then do use it for inference across thousands of cores it means that you could have a workload that scales um, and untether.ai is again one of these startups vc funded looking to get a product into the ecosystem then we have um, some really interesting talks from Tesla about Dojo. Now, if you remember last year, Tesla had their own AI Day event about a week before Hot Chips. And we lamented the fact that they announced Dojo at their own event rather than Hot Chips. Hot Chips would have been a great um, area for a uh, great uh, event for them to do that. However, at Hot Chips, you only get half an hour. They could do their own event. I was invited to their own event. Um, Tesla don't have any technical PR. Um, I do know a couple of people inside and they do also have an AI day this year, uh, but I've not been invited. I would have loved to have been invited. Um, but in this case, at Hot Chips, if they're either regurgitating what they presented before or whether it's new, it's actually good that they're presenting at Hot Chips this year. So that audience gets to see the deep dive and essentially ask Q&A. The first talk is about the microarchitecture of Tesla's Exascale computer the dojo and the second talk is supercompute system scaling for machine learning training in this um it's 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 like for example there's so much we don't know about dojo and i i didn't do a video on it i just ran out of time 
Um, but for, for, for example, did you know that uh, Dojo uses HBM? But it's not on the wafer scale chip itself. It's on the control processors, which are a separate ASIC. And that was kind of hidden. And I only knew that because I, um, I asked a question on LinkedIn to uh, one of the executives at Tesla. Um, I think it was actually the guy who's speaking later, uh, Ganesh Vanketam, Vankatara Manan. Um, he's actually got the keynote later in the day. Uh, but yeah, no, he confirmed that the uh, application processors that all the control processors use HBM. So wondering if we'll see more detail on that. The fifth talk of this ses session is Cerebrus. They're doing an architecture deep dive, the first look inside the hardware software code design for deep learning. This is Sean Lee at Cerebrus. He's done a, f a fair few talks on the WaveScale engine um, and the software. I'm not entirely sure there'll be anything new in this talk. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of Cerebrus. Um, CEO Andrew Feldman and I get on really well. Though I'm not too sure that this talk will be anything more than that sort of software layer. And they already did one of those, I believe, one or two years ago. Um, so either this is an evolution of the fact or some more insight into the roadmap. Maybe they even talk about WaveScale Engine 3 um, at the end. We'll see. Half an hour break. Then a three talk session to kind of balance out the five talk session just on network and switches. First up, AMD talking about networking and switches. Yes, uh, because they acquired Xilinx. So they're talking about their 400 uh, gigabit adaptive SmartNIC SOC. Uh, this is uh, Versal based, I, I, I think. Um, but this is Jaideep Dastidar from AMD. Uh, that, yeah, that's just going to be an opportunity for AMD to redefine its product and its roadmap in terms of AMD owned Xilinx rather than simply Xilinx. That being said, um, AMD would be fools to mess with Xilinx's roadmap. So we'll see how that um, that span that spans out. It may end up to the point where um, we're talking, yeah, about SmartNix in PCs in data centers, AMD logo. They've already got the Xilinx logo. Let's go AMD. Next up is uh, is from Juni is a talk by Juniper, and Juniper falls into this networking realm of companies you hear about, but they don't necessarily always necessarily talk a lot about their product. Um, you know, you're talking Juniper, Cisco, and all that stuff. This time, Juniper's Express Five is a 28.8 terabits per second network routing ASIC and its variations. So Juniper obviously does switches in the data center. Um, this is going to be essentially a deep dive into one of their one of their switches and the variations therein. Um, so looking forward to that. That should give some insight into how Juniper works. At least I've never spoken with Juniper directly ever. Uh, so yeah, another company um, in this space that we don't typically think of unless you're directly working with the product. So it's good that they're uh, having a presentation at Hot Chips. Next up, we have NVIDIA, and NVIDIA obviously have um, not only Mellanox, but their NVLink. And this talk is about the NVLink network switch, NVIDIA's switch chip for high communication bandwidth superpods. Now, we've already spoken about how uh, the NVLink and the NV switches work in DGX. Uh, they're sort of like uh, eight GPU system where they speak between the GPUs. The point is with a superpod, now a superpod is when you add a lot of these DGX systems together. If you buy a superpod, it's expensive, but you could be, I think I think it's a top 15 supercomputer just with an instant purchase of a superpod. Um, however, you have to speak not only about the networking between the GPUs within a single DGX system, but also the networking beyond that to the other DGX systems in your pod. So I think this may be a next generation hardware, or they're just opening up about what's already, what's already in there. I, I thought they were doing Ethernet before, but if they've moved to... Uh, NVLink network switch, there's going to be something new in there. So then we go on to uh, another hour of lunch, and then we come on to the second keynote, as I kind of mentioned earlier. We've got Tesla, um, Beyond Compute, enabling AI through system integration. This, I think, is going to be a big talk about how packaging enables the next wave of extreme compute. So with Dojo, we see that uh, Tesla is able to push the high end of AI by having uh, multiple chips on a single wafer, massively connected high network bandwidth. The point is, if that's say 10 kilowatts, what's the point in scaling out 600 watt GPUs when you can have your peak performance of a single um, unit be higher? That's kind of the same reasoning why Cerebrus exists as well. So at, as companies may push towards that sort of infrastructure, especially as we move to chiplets, 
Um, Tesla's going to speak about what they're doing, hopefully some of their interaction with TSMC as well. I'm really looking forward to that. Again, if anybody from Tesla's watching, give me a call, give me an email, send me a message, Twitter, um, and uh, give me the heads up and I'll probably produce content around it. After the keynote, we go straight into three talks. So it's now a keynote, hour and a half um, of uh, more talks about ADAS and Grace. This is essentially a purely NVIDIA section. We've got Michael Ditti of NVIDIA talking about NVIDIA's Orin SOC. We've got Liev Xiang from Nodar talking about 3D vision and mass production of autonomous vehicles. That's probably using NVIDIA infrastructure. And then Jonathan Evans from NVIDIA is talking about NVIDIA Grace. Um, hopefully we'll get some more insight into Grace through that. Again, NVIDIA is one of these companies that because I didn't write about GPUs for so long, I don't have any insights. So if NVIDIA, if you're doing briefings on this ahead of the event, again, please give me a call. Um, speak to your analyst relations team. They know who I am. Uh, speak to Ken Brown. He knows who I am. So that's that session break, another half hour break. Then the final session of the event, this is the one that you've stayed through everything else to come to, mobile and edge processors. First up, AMD Ryzen 6000. Rembrandt. We've covered Rembrandt extensively. As I said, some of the Hot Chips talks are talking about what's already been announced. Um, so Jim Gibney from AMD is going to be talking about Rembrandt, and I don't expect to see anything new out of that talk. Next talk is the one I'm looking forward to. It's Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake, Intel next-gen 3D client architecture platform with Foveros. So I've confirmed with Intel, with Foveros on Meteor Lake. This is probably going to be our first look into Arrow Lake, what comes after Meteor Lake. Um, and uh, by Wilfred Gomez, Intel, going to speak about it. Now, this is Foveros is essentially 2.5D with Foveros. Um, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this, especially because this is in the mobile and edge processors. If this was a desktop chip, it wouldn't be in mobile and edge. Hmm. Ask yourself, have you ever heard of Meteor Lake being spoke about in the desktop context? I haven't. Everything that's shown looks mobile. So ask yourself, is Meteor Lake coming to desktop? I'm going to predict no, but let's wait until this talk. Then we have MediaTek with the third talk of the session, talking about the Dimensity 9000. Um, this was the flagship that they launched um, at uh, the start of the year. They've since launched the 9000 Plus, which is the updated version, the mid-gen refresh. Uh, so yeah, Dimensity 9000, Cortex-X2, A710s, A510s, competing against Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1. I don't expect to see anything new that we haven't seen here before. It's 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 going to be an integration SOC uh, with some uh, MediaTek secret source going to go through the design there. Then the final talk is um, is actually going to be a little bit confusing because if you followed Intel's uh, Xeon D platform, this is their kind of edge, but with 10 gig networking. Um, they announced Intel Xeon D 2700 and 1700 late last year. This final talk is going to be on that processor. So I don't think we're going to see anything new, maybe SKU lists. I, I don't know if SKU lists are out for it yet. Um, but yeah, it's it's not exactly the most exciting talk to end on. I think Intel should, the, the Arrow Lake, Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake should be the last one of the set day. But we're ending at 7 p.m. It's going to be a long day. And uh, yeah, lots to lots to speak about. But Hot Chips is, is, is the conference I look forward to most usually uh, in any given year between that and any of the IEEE events and supercomputing. It's a real chip conference. It's really talking about the product and the silicon and the design. Marketing is part of it, but there's not really any deep marketing. So it's great for press to attend, for technical press to attend, for analysts for companies in the industry, especially all the ones that I've already mentioned, um, they will have people on site. And then you have companies like Apple who send people every year but never present anything. Come on, Apple, step up your game. Uh, and uh, also startups and, and academics. And the neat thing is anybody uh, can, uh, can be part of Hot Chips. Um, you can sign up. This year, it's actually quite cheap. Now, I've kind of missed the early bird um, I've been wanting to film this for a while, but I missed the early bird pricing. But the most you'll pay as an, as an as a non-student who's not an IEEE member is $160. If you're a student and an IEEE member, it's only $50. That gets you access to the tutorials on Sunday, all the presentations on the Monday and Tuesday, access to the Slack channels, 
so this is where you can ask Q and A um, of of the presenters while um, the presentations are ongoing, and your question may be called out as part of that. You'll have access to all the slides that are being presented, assuming they get signed off by each of the legal teams for the various companies. Um, you'll get access to those on typically on the Sunday morning, or if not the Monday morning. And uh, the you know Slack channel stays around for for a good few months. Um, you can also um, integrate with any of the companies that have uh, sponsorship booths there. It's very well recommended. Um, I say I've been going for for I think this is my sixth or seventh now, and I highly recommend it. If you've got time, if you've got time that you can spend out of your Monday and Tuesday uh, to at least watch some of the talks or participate in the talks. Anybody in the industry, anybody in the financial industry, um, yeah, go to the website, hotchips.org, all one word. Um, very easy to sign up. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's in two weeks. It's in two weeks. It's it's a shame not flying out, but I hope to see you there. I'll be in the Slack channels. Um, I'll also be on Twitter. And exactly what content I put on the channel, whether it will be uh, live streams again this year or something a bit more curated, we'll see. Because um, they did really take it out of me last year. Um, but I think everybody had a good fun time watching it. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for watching. And like I say, if you're really into your, your chips, this is a conference to go to.